The perfect start in Sun and Moon. With the holiday season just around the corner, there are going to be a bunch of new players taking a plunge in Pokemon Sun and Moon. And with such a huge, expansive, and somewhat complex game, it's easy to feel like you missed something. So, for everyone starting a new game, receiving it for Christmas, or you finally have time on winter break, here's the guide to having a perfect start in Pokemon Sun and Moon. Most of the things we're going to discuss will be done on the first island or the very beginning of the second island. And this video is a little longer than some of the others, so just be patient as there's lots of little goodies and nuggets of information scattered throughout. If you give me 9 minutes, I'll give you the world. Most of this is revolved around team building. I've made this totally awesome, super dope bubble timeline for the major island trials and events that we're going to be focusing on. The most effective types of Pokemon for the major trials and points in the game are as follows. So I'm going to go over some of the most powerful and readily available Pokemon to start your game off with, and I'm going to be going over the typing when it becomes available. For your starter, you can pick whoever you want, but this video is going to be talking about the best team with pretty much alternative starters. So I'm going to be picking Linden. If you love one of the starters that's not Linden, you can go for them, but Linden will make the beginning of the game a little bit easier. I've also made a video about the best starter in Sun and Moon, and I'll leave the link down below. So as you should know, there's no more gyms, we do trials in this game. And before your first trial, in the outskirts, by the professor's house, is where we're going to be encountering our first water types, Slowpoke and Wingle. And since ice types won't be available until the third island, with the exception of Delibird, I'd recommend catching one of these guys and teaching it the TMs for Ice Beam and Blizzard later in the game. Pelipper isn't a bad option, even though he is double weak to electric, and I believe those are our only options for water types before we reach the second island. But once you finish your second trial, you can get Magikarp and Gyarados. So for now, we'll use Wingle as a placeholder. He'll also come in handy for getting a really important item very, very shortly. If you're watching this before January 11th, 2017, you could get a free Munchlax for your team through Mystery Gift. You can pick it up at the Poké Center next to the Trainer School. Now, you don't need a normal type, but it never hurts. And he also learns Hold Back, which functions just like False Swipe and leaves Pokémon with 1 HP. So now let's talk Electric types. Yeah, I know. Electric wasn't on the top of my list for best typings. In fact, it was nowhere near it. However, there's not a lot of types of Pokemon that aren't covered by the rest of the team that we're going to be building. And the one trial that we really need it for, the second trial, which is on the second island, there's no great grass types by them, other than if you picked Rowlet. So we have a couple options on the first island. Pichu, Magnemite, and Grubbin's evolve forms. Magnemite and Grubbin both fully evolve on the last island. Meanwhile, you can have a Raichu by Route 8 on the second island. So I'm going to recommend Raichu or Magnezone. Even if you're going to go with Raichu, you can pick up a Magnemite outside the trainer school and he'll help us get through with his steel typing. Once you're all set with the trainer school, you'll be led out to the main part of town. Here, you can catch a Pichu. After you're all set in town, on Route 2 you get your first opportunity at Makuhita in the rustling grass. He only has a 30% chance of it being him, otherwise it's a young goose or Rattata. You may need to soft reset your game or zone out and zone back in in order to encounter him. Just after the trial, Mankey is available on Route 3. While he's a little less bulky, he is faster. So whoever you decide, let's grab Makuhita on Route 2, even if it's not our final choice. With this, you shouldn't have a problem taking out the young goose or Rattata in the Verdant Cavern. Here is also when we can encounter our first fairy type and our only option until later in the game. It's Cutie Fly, with five weaknesses. And while he'll help us get through the grand trial on the first island, I don't know if he's gonna help much past that. Now a little bit later we'll be opening our options to the beginning of Route 4, where we can find Eevee, who could evolve into Sylveon, as long as he knows a fairy move and has two hearts of affection in Refresh. A quick note, Pokemon Refresh is actually really great. The more a Pokemon likes you, the more advantages it has in battle. It can heal itself of any status condition, it can automatically leave itself with 1 HP, or completely avoid attacks. So let's catch a cutie fly as a placeholder for Sylveon. By the way, Alolan Rattata is double weak to fighting, and the TM for Brick Break is located here at the bottom left of the main room of the cavern. So with this great team so far, that'll take us through the first island. Don't forget to pick up the Soothe Bell 
from the breeder on Route 3, as that'll help evolve Pichu and Munchlax. So once you finish your trial, before leaving the first island, there's a little bit of backtracking we're gonna do. First thing, we're gonna get our second Soothe Bell, which is in Haoli City, and you just need to go into the City Hall, and a deli bird will deliver it to you. Next, make your way up north to the Verdant Cavern, and get the TM for Thief inside of there. Now head back to Route 1, and you'll find an area that requires Rock Smash on the bottom of the screen. This patch of grass here has a 5% spawn rate of Munchlax. He has a 100% chance of holding leftovers, so teach Thief to wingle, and also if you still have Cutie Fly with you, wait till it calls for help, use Thief on one, use Thief on a different one, and then catch a third one. Now you'll have three leftovers in your party. It almost helps make up for the 5% encounter rate. So if you miss the Munchlax mystery gift, or if you just want to know where to get Smeargle, first, we have to catch a Spearow on Route 3. They appear in the grass at the north area, or has a chance to drop from one of the shadows that you see above. Catch Spearow, teach it False Swipe, and make your way to Route 2. Smeargle has a 20% chance of spawning in this area. Now it's important that your Spearow is faster than Smeargle, and you attack it with False Swipe. That's pretty much most of the backtracking that we want to do before we make our way to the second island. Here, we're going to be filling up our team. The first patch of grass that you enter, which is on Route 4, has a 20% encounter rate for Mudbray and a 5% chance encounter rate for Eevee. Ground has a huge place in this lineup. It's super effective against Fire, Rock, Electric, and Team Skull, which is primarily Poison and Bug. So catch yourself a Mudbray and an Eevee. And to raise Eevee's affection level, you need to open up Pokemon Refresh. You need to pet it and feed it, I think about 14 times, to raise it to the second level of affection. Or, if somehow you have your hands on a rainbow bean, feed it that, and I think that's all that it takes. From here on out, we're pretty much just going to be doing some swapping. If you don't want Wingle and Pelipper and you prefer a Gyarados, as soon as you're done with the first trial on the second island at Brooklyn Hill, you can catch a Magikarp, or use that adrenaline orb that you got on Route 4 and call for a Gyarados. I'll leave a video on SOS Battles down below in the description. For Pokemon Sun players, you could swap your Makuhita for a Passimian after completing the fourth trial at the Lush Jungle on this island. So there we have it. Now, do you need to follow this guide 100%? Absolutely not. But this team is mostly pure type Pokemon that will have you with minimum type weaknesses and effective against all of the trials. And as long as you have a TM for Ghost, Dark, Fire, and Rock learned, every Elite Four member and Pokemon as well. So thank you for sticking with me. I know it was a long one, but there's lots of options to weigh in in this game. You might want to swap some of these Pokemon for different ones throughout your trial, so go for it. But overall, it's a pretty spectacular team. Let me know what you thought about this video, my team that I built here, if you plan on implementing it for your adventure in Pokemon Sun and Moon. By the way, guys, these videos, they take such a long time to put together. I usually put together about an 8 to 10 page script, do all of my own research, get all of the images, get all the screenshots. Then I go through the rigorous process of consolidating the script from 10 pages down to 5 so it's not a stupid long video for you. And I record my voice, I do all my video editing, instead of just having a screenshot up, talking over it, and you hear me say, um, uh, well, uh, well hang on, let me look this up. No, instead, I'm delivering great videos that have a lot of research, time, and love put into them. So if you would show your love and drop a like down below, that'd be super, super appreciated. Till next time, Austin John out. Hey, YouTubers. Are you guys enjoying the videos? I'm really, really appreciating the support. Over here, I have a couple of additional videos if you guys want to check them out. Maybe be helpful throughout your entire adventure, and I'll see you guys next time.